Ah, The Devil is a Part-Timer. One of the first anime that I ever watched and an introduction into reverse isekai, a subgenre that I thoroughly enjoy. I think it might be fair to say that a lot of people watching a dude in a cheap fox mask and cheap sunglasses ranting about a cliche anime might have had a similar experience. In fact, how long has it been since season 1 came out? 2013! Holy shit! So some of you guys might remember The Devil is a Part-Timer, a show about a demon king Mao who loses his powers and gets isekai'd to our world, together with his trusty general Al Shiel. Al Shiel? Al Shiel? Anyway, while Al Shiel runs the house, Mao starts working at McDonald's, <clears throat> sorry, McRonald's, to create funds for re-establishing his kingdom. However, the hero Emilia has also come to this world with the intention of slaying the demon king so that he can never return. At this point, I'm going to drop some spoilers for Season 1, since you should have seen it by now anyway. If you haven't watched Season 1 yet, then why on earth are you watching a video about me complaining about Season 2? That just doesn't make any sense. Emilia and Mao establish an uneasy ceasefire rather quickly, and Mao even manages to get himself a girlfriend. That's better than 99% of the people watching this video, eh? Mao also slowly develops into a bit of a better person, transforming into his true demon form to save Tokyo and his girlfriend from one of his former generals. Dude, why on earth does this sound like something that an 8th grader would dream about? Anyway, I finished season 1 with a smile on my face since I really, really enjoyed it and was also impressed by the concept. Damn, remember when Isekai was an original concept? Wow, those were the days. Since it was one of the first anime shows that I ever watched, it became a part of my top 10, and even as it slowly dropped out of that prestigious group, it still had a place in my heart for the fun times that it gave me. But around a year and a half ago, I stumbled across the manga for The Devil is a Part-Timer, and I thought to myself, hmm, this could be interesting. It wasn't. In fact, I was so disappointed that I ended up picking it up once, dropping it, then picking it up again, and then dropping it again. I can't fault Satoshi Wagahara, the original author of the light novels, for trying out new things. In fact, the concept of a lot of isekais and reverse isekais is so generic that it requires a constant influx of new settings, gimmicks and characters, and The Devil is a Part-Timer is no exception to that requirement. Therefore, I would even like to commend our valiant author for trying out new things which actually changed the story drastically. But that sadly doesn't mean that these new ideas were very good. Sorry, Mr. Wagahara. I have tried my best to come up with a way to express my viewpoint while still not spoiling the anime too much. As such, I will only really be talking about the concept of Season 2, which becomes very apparent in the first episode anyway. In case you don't even want to hear that, here is a three-word critique that is completely spoiler-free of why The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 will flop. New characters bad. Now everybody who doesn't even want the slightest of spoilers can like the video, subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment about why they are really looking forward to The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 or about why I'm a great anti but that's also fine. And after you've done that, you can gladly click off the video. But do those things first, I'm watching you. To those of you who are still watching, here is a very spoiler-free critique of why The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 will flop. In the announcement trailer for Season 2, you might have noticed the appearance of two new characters. This one is pretty much as irrelevant as it gets. She is just another addition to the show's harem in order to hopefully sell more merchandise. Obviously, she has a backstory and a lot of motivations and reason for doing things, but, in my opinion, she rarely leaves an impression and her only real appeal as a new character is, well, that she's a new character. Which in itself is pretty sad. The other character introduced herself in the trailer with an annoyingly loud Can you guess who's the daddy? This monstrosity is Alice Ramos, the destroyer of my once so cherished slice of life show. She has a very confusing backstory with lots of magic and spellcraft involved, but the gist of it is that she is also from Mao's and Amelia's world and is a relic in human form that can transform into a weapon. 
I have described this with the utmost care of not spoiling anything more than necessary, so please don't hound me with fine little details of what I got wrong once the anime starts airing, thanks in advance. The introduction of a new character can greatly enhance the entertainment value of a show, but more often than not, new characters just suck. Just for example, I challenge you to think of some new characters that you didn't like or that ruined the show for you. I bet that you can think of at least three. Oh, and please write them in the comments, I want to know which second seasons I should avoid. Alice Ramos is the textbook example of a character that just doesn't fit into a show. I mean, just imagine what the editors meeting must have been like. So, everyone, you know how we have this fantastic light novel series on our hands. You know my light novel, right? The one where a demon king comes to earth, lives just above the poverty line and has to fight the legendary hero who is literally trying to slay him? Well, I think that I've come up with an idea on how to take it to the next level. You know what my series really needs? A baby. This bad boy can get so much mileage out of my show. The problem with Alice Ramos is that she inserts herself right in the middle of her story and is annoying as fuck. She changes entire character relationships in an unnatural way and forces the story to progress, in my opinion, in the wrong direction. You'll see exactly what I mean if you manage to force yourself through the 12 episodes of dreariness that are about to come. Looking back at season 1, I also noticed something else. The Devil is a Part-Timer just isn't that amazing. Now, please pack away your pitchforks, put them away please, because the concept is very cool, I granted that, and the execution of the show was also very amusing. But in the end, it was still very light entertainment. There were the usual tropes and the usual gags, nothing really revolutionary or new. In my personal opinion, a lot of weebs, including myself, have put The Devil is a Part-Timer on a nostalgic pedestal. At the end of the day, I think there is also way too much hype going on for a show that, in the end, is probably a 6 out of 10, if not worse, and will never be able to live up to the hype that it is receiving online. Now, on a final note, before I let you get on with your day, I don't have anything against child characters in anime, if they are done right. Anya Forger, for example, is fucking awesome. She is vital to the progression of the story and also an inadvertent comedic genius. Alice Ramos, on the other hand, is an F-tier Anya Forger. Now, I'm not saying that The Devil is a Part-Timer is trying to copy Spy Family's success with a child character like Anya, but just the fact that I've seen how good a child character can be with Anya Forger makes the addition of Alice Ramos to The Devil is a Part-Timer so much worse. She is not a natural addition to the story, her omnipresence becomes annoying quickly, and she sadly lives up to the anime misconception that more cuteness equals better. It doesn't. Please watch The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 to make your own mind up, but don't say that I didn't warn you. Anyways, thank you very, very much for watching the video. It means the absolute world to me, and cheers! See you next week, in case I can somehow manage to get a good upload schedule. Yeah. <laughs>